Letter and I'm back with Carbide 3D with some fun Valentine's Day projects. I've created three different SVGs that you guys are free to use however you like, but I'm going to show you how I use them to create some Valentine's Day gifts. These are great beginner projects. If you just got a CNC and you're just stepping into that world, this is a great introductory because we will be using a few different kinds of stocks, different bits, and also different tool paths. And I will walk you through easy ways to use these files. All you have to do is open them up and get started. And if you want to see a little bit more of how I designed these SVGs and converted the files using the Procreate app and Carbide Create, you can check out my other videos that I've done with Carbide 3D on their YouTube channel and that will show you a little bit more of the in-depth process. But today let's get started with our first project. Who doesn't love jewelry on Valentine's Day? So for my first project, I created this necklace with this teeny tiny gold plated charm using a diamond drag engraved bit. And this came together so quick, the toolpath ran in two minutes, you guys. So I'm gonna walk you through how to make this. And I will also link all of my supplies down in the description so that you guys can easily recreate this at home. The very first thing I'm going to do is import my SVG. And we're gonna ignore the letters here for just a second and just work with the circle. This specific circle is formatted to be the exact size of the necklace charms that I'm working with, the exact diameter. So if you guys are working with a different one, be sure to go in and change that size. And I am just going to create a jig with MDF and I'm going to pocket out this circle to the exact depth of my charm as well, which happens to be 0.04. So I take it over my machine and I pocket that out and we get that going. And then I can jump back to Carbide Create and edit my letters to be the right size, pull in whatever letters you want to use from the SVG. And then I'm going to go in and choose my diamond drag engrave bit with an engraved toolpath. I'm going to use a plunge rate of 60 and a feed rate of 80 and the RPMs don't matter because we will not be turning on the router to use the diamond dragon grape bit. Now I am putting it into the little jig that I created with some double sided tape and I'm starting my machine and it's going to do its thing. It took about two minutes and then I put my charm on a jump ring and attached it to a necklace chain that was already put together for me and voila, there you have it. Project number two, for this SVG, I decided to make two different items. One in miniature form, this cute little gift tag on acrylic. And the second is this big cutting board. And I got this cutting board from Ikea. It was really cheap, but it's still pretty good quality. It's nice and heavy. So if you were like, oh man, I don't know how to make a cutting board. I haven't figured that out yet or maybe I don't have time, this is a great option. Um, I've gotten them from Ikea, I've gotten them from Aldi, from Trader Joe's, Home Goods. There are a lot of different options available to you, but this one is light wood and it was nice and cheap and ready to go. So that's a great option. So I'm gonna show you how I turned this SVG into two different items, different sizes, and two very different kinds of stock. I went ahead and imported my SVG and I am just going to resize my stock to fit my acrylic size and my acrylic depth. And I am resizing my SVG just to a small gift tag size, I'm starting with a rectangle and then I'm just gonna test out a couple different edges to see what I like. I really like this fillet edge. It gives it this quirky little oval shape that I think is really cute for a gift tag. I'm just gonna size it up to my liking, and then I'm going to add a circle kind of towards the end so that I can add some ribbon to it so that I can tie this around a mason jar or a wrapped gift, anything like that. Now I'm gonna set up my toolpaths, and for the words, I'm gonna use an engraving toolpath, and I'm gonna select my diamond drag engraved bit, and again, change the plunge rate to 60 and the feed rate to 80, not touching the RPMs because we won't turn on the router with the diamond drag engraved bit. And then I'm going to use an O flute, a 1 8 inch, to cut out the little hole for the ribbon and also cut out the entire tag. I'm just setting that to the bottom of the stock as the depth and I'm going to check to make sure it's cutting all the way through and then I'm going to head over to my machine. I'm going to let my diamond dragon grave bit do its thing. It was pretty quick and it fills it all in. If you do not have the engraved toolpath, you can also use a contour toolpath and it will look great as well. 
So once it's all put together, I am just adding some ribbon and finishing it off and it will be all ready to put on a wrapped gift or maybe some homemade cookies or something like that for Valentine's Day. Now onto our big cutting board. I'm again just importing the SVG and then I'm going to go adjust my stock width, height, and thickness to the measurements of the board and change it to softwood. And then I wanted to center the words on the stock. You gotta make sure all the letters are grouped together and don't make the mistake that I did. And then I'm gonna head over to my tool pass and do an advanced V carve. I didn't want to lose any of the details so I'm using a 30 degree engraver and then I'm just gonna check and see how this looks with a 1 8 inch end mill to pocket out the whole word. I'm gonna check it out in pine since that's really close to the color of what I'm using and I see that there's some spots that I'm not sure are going to be carved out completely so I'm gonna go ahead and change my end mill to a 1 16th end mill and take a look again and it all looks great to me so now I am ready to head over to my shape oko. I had never used this exact board before, so I was a little worried it was gonna come out fuzzy, but the carve was beautiful. You could definitely stain the inside of the words, but I just left it as is for just a really subtle contrast. For our last project and our third and final SVG, I thought you can't have Valentine's Day without X's and O's, so we had to go with a tic-tac-toe. This is a miniature one. It acts as a dry erase board. It's made out of cast acrylic and it would be a really fun gift for kids to hand out in their class or even just to give your kids. And it's a great on the go game. And this one is really fun because I used a V-carve on the acrylic and I'll show you more of how to do that and how easy and accessible that is. But also the wonderful thing about SVGs is that you can size them up. You design them in one size and you can size them up however big you want or however small you want. So I thought, let's go big and let's make a giant tic-tac-toe board that will now live on my dining room for my family to play with. Here are the letters for my big tic-tac-toe board. I was super excited about this. I saw one on the Pottery Barn website and I thought, I'm gonna make a dupe of that. I'm gonna make one that looks super chic. It's black on black. The sides of my letters are gold. This was by far the longest project that I did for this video, but you guys, it still came together in all in all, all the work when it's all said and done, about an hour, but possibly also less, um, just depending on how quickly you can change out your machine and how fast you can stain things also, and your weather, because let's be real, that affects a lot of our projects, right? So this project was well worth it. It's still a quick project. It's still an easy project for a beginner, and I'm gonna walk you all through it, and we'll see how this works. Heading back into Carbide Create, I import my SVG and you'll see that it already comes pre-sized for the tic-tac-toe to be cut out with the words and the little boxes. I'm going to run an advanced V-carve on the whole thing and I am going to use a 30 degree V-bit. I found that the best recipe for this is to do a fast plunge and feed rate to reduce the amount of chips that are melting to your acrylic because it is plastic. So I have it set at a plunge rate of 60 with a feed rate of 80 at 10,000 RPMs with a max step of 0.12. And I'm just going to check out my simulation to make sure everything looks correct. All looks good, so I'm going to head over to my machine and run the V-carve. You can also use a diamond drag and grave bit for this. I've just found that it takes a little bit longer to do the fill and the V-carve runs so quickly. So now I am going to fill in all of the lines in the engraving with a Posca paint pen. And don't worry about staying inside the lines. You can wipe off the excess using a wet paper towel or a baby wipe in my case. I've just found that this really makes the lines pop and makes it easier to read, but it's completely optional. So now I can use my miniature tic-tac-toe to play with a dry erase board. You could also use like little pom-pom balls or marbles or stones, anything like that. But I like the convenience of the dry erase marker and I think it's fun for my kids too. We can just erase it and play again. And now for my big tic-tac-toe. I'm going to head back into Carbide Create and change the stock to fit the pine that I'm using. I'm also gonna erase the words and just use the boxes for this one. I'm creating an 18 by 18 square because that's the size that I want my board to be and sizing up my tic-tac-toe boxes so that they run off the sides because I want it to completely fill up the whole square. And I am just running a V-carb tool path with a 90 degree V-bit and I am setting it to the bottom of the stock so it will just do its thing and adding some tabs for the contour and I'm gonna be cutting that out with a 1 4 inch end mill. Just checking to make sure that everything looks good and then taking it over to my machine and letting it run. 
and this carved out super quickly. It's a really easy and simple tool path. Then I took it over and I added some black stain, making sure to get the sides and into all the grooves of the V carve. While that dries, I'm going to go back to Carve I Create to that same file I used to create the tic-tac-toe board, and I'm going to add in some letters using the font tool to make sure that they fit inside those boxes, and then I'm changing my stock to acrylic because that's the first thing that I'm going to be cutting my letters out of, and I am going to delete my tic-tac-toe boxes and then arrange my letters so that they fit perfectly on my 12 by 19 acrylic stock. And you can do this with any font, but I really liked the look of this one. So now I'm going to go in and choose my 1 8 inch O flute to cut out the acrylic. And I'm going to set it to the stock bottom to make sure that it is cutting all the way through. And you'll notice that I have not added tabs to this. And that is because I'm going to use double-sided tape on the acrylic because I just felt like it was going to be a nightmare to try and cut off tabs out of 10 letters. The double-sided tape really solved that problem for me. Once I am satisfied with my tool paths here, I'm going to export my G-code and then I'm going to go back in and use this same exact file and these same exact tool paths to cut the letters again out of MDF. I wanted to cut them twice and stack them together because I wanted the contrast of the black matte acrylic with the gold painted MDF. I also thought that it would make the letters a little bit taller and a little bit more sturdy because my kids will be using them. And again, I'm not using tabs for this MDF. I'm just going to use double-sided tape like with the acrylic so that I don't have to go in and sand off all of the tabs afterwards. It just saves me one extra step. So now I'm taking it over to my Shapeoko and just cutting everything out with the 1 8 inch end mill and it ran super quick and was really easy to pry off of the double-sided tape despite all of the dust. Then I am using my favorite Martha Stewart metallic gold paint to just paint the edges and also the insides of the O's. I could definitely have used spray paint, but I just feel like it's a lot harder to get into those crevices with the spray paint. While I was painting, I was running my black acrylic on my Shapeoko and I love the acrylic because when it's finished, you don't have to sand anything, you don't have to paint anything, it is just ready to go. I'm using my favorite E6000 glue to glue the two letters together. I matched up everything prior to gluing it just to make sure that I had the X's going the right direction. And there it is, the finished product. It is all ready to go. The X's and O's look great. I cut out five of each letter because that's the max that you'll need for a game of tic-tac-toe. I foresee many tic-tac-toe tournaments in my family's future. So now that we've wrapped up all of our Valentine's Day projects, I hope you guys feel inspired and more confident in using your machines and also more confident in using SVGs. And if you guys do use these files, I would love to see what you come up with. So be sure to tag Garbide 3D on Instagram so we can check them out and so I can get some good ideas for next year. And until next time, keep creating and don't be afraid to try new things, guys.